We're going to go ahead and start this evening. Um, for the opening this evening, the introduction to our meeting, I wanted to remind us that there are times for everything. There is a time for everything. A time to be moved and a time not to be moved is what I wanted to consider tonight. First of all, when is the time not to be moved? <clears throat> Psalm 16, verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Amen. This is a time when it's not appropriate to be moved. It's when the Lord is before us, when we've been set at his right hand, we are before the Lord, and it is not a time to be moved away from him. That's not a time to be moved. Again, in Acts 20, 23 and 24, it says, The Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me, but none of these things move me. The Apostle Paul was founded. He was steadfast in the, in the faith and in the grace of God. And so none of these things, not even bonds and afflictions, imprisonment, even the threat of death, none of these things could move the Apostle Paul. He would not be moved at such a time. Proverbs 12, verse 3 says, But the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Here is the source as to why the saints are not moved away from the hope of the gospels because we are rooted in Christ Jesus. That root holds us steadfast in a sure place, which is Christ himself. <clears throat> it also shows these things also show that the grace of God is stronger than anything that could oppose the people of God, that these things can't move us because we're on a sure foundation. We're in a sure place. Amen. But there is a time to be moved. There are times, in uh, Judges 13, 25 speaks of one. It's, this is speaking of Samson. It says, the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp. Again, 2 Peter 1, 21. For the prophecy came, not in old time by the will of men, but by holy men of God. They spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So being moved by the spirit, guided or directed, this kind of movement is appropriate to be moved by the Lord. We're not moving away from the Lord. We're not moving far from him, but rather we're being moved along with him. We're following him. God is wanting to use his people. And this is being in a stance of preparedness, sensitivity to him so that we are able to be used by him. He can move his people. <clears throat> now this shows that we're agreed with the Lord. It says two can't walk together unless they be agreed. And when we walk together with the Lord, that's when he moves us. Remember it said of the kingdom of God that the kingdom suffers violence. And only the people that are of that same nature can be moved. The violent take it by force. So the, the reason I started thinking about these things is one of Brother Given's comments last week. He said that God is moved by what he desires. So the desires of God should also move his people. Let us also be moved by what God desires. Amen. Psalm 123 verse 2 says, Behold, as the eyes of the servant look to the hand of their masters, and as the eye of the maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God. Our eye is upon the Lord with expectation. We're watching him to see where he looks so that we can move to where his eye is turned. We want to follow him. <clears throat> When it's our desire to please the Lord, we will be watching for opportunities to serve him and to do his will and to do his purpose without having to be told or commanded. This is what, is what the scriptures refer to as being guided with his eye. Now, our desires have actually been made the same with Christ. Christ's desires have become our desires whenever he made us new because his life has been imparted to us. It's working in us to produce the same desires that he has coming from within our own heart so that they're the same. And again, we back up a step. Christ, what Christ desires is only what the Father has desired also. Remember in John 4, verse 34, Jesus said to his disciples, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to accomplish or finish his work. That was Jesus' desire because it was the Father's desire. And when we are made one with Christ, then our desires are also the same as theirs. <clears throat> the reason Christ was satisfied and sustained by doing the will of the Father is because it was his desire. 
And that's when we can be satisfied and sustained also. It's whenever we are doing the things that we desire, but when we realize they are the same desire as our Father in heaven. Um, first, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 talks about the love of Christ con constraining us or compelling us. And a lot of the times when I think about this text, I think about seeing the love that Christ has for the Father, for his people. These things draw us nearer to him. And that does have to do with it. But I've seen a little bit different light here is that when we see what Christ desires, the love of Christ, what he loves, then we're compelled also in those same areas to, to follow after those same things. The desires of God in Christ Jesus, they're very powerful and constraining when they're disclosed to the sensitive heart of the believer, and they will move that heart Godward. Amen. That's the whole purpose of movement is to draw us that way. But what is the purpose of being moved other than accomplishing the desire that provoked the movement? There's a reason that the Lord is moving us in a certain direction. It's to accomplish a certain work. The Lord is working in our hearts to create our desires, and so they match up with his own. But it's in order that we move to work together with him to accomplish his will and purpose in the earth. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, we remember. But now Christ is also in us accomplishing the will of his Father in our hearts. And this is one of the reasons that the angels desire to look into such things, that mortal and frail man have the same desire of God Almighty, and they're working together with him because that's what they want. That's their Amen. longing, Amen. and it, it provokes angels to consider these things. Now, one way that the Lord moves us or compels us is by revealing himself to us. Whenever you see more of the Lord, it's more of a provocation for you to press in even harder and to progress even further than we have before. So tonight's an opportunity for that. Let us give heed to the gospel that we be preached here and prepare to move with the Lord tonight. <clears throat> so we'll open with the word of prayer this evening. 